first stories I can ever remember falling in love with were the stories featuring a little girl called Millicent Margaret Amanda, better known to us readers as Millie Molly Mandy. A wonderful collection of stories by Joyce Lancaster Brisley that were first published in the Christian Science Monitor in the year 1925. They were first published as a collection of stories in the year 1928. Millie Molly Mandy lives in a white cottage with a thatched roof in a little village that is unnamed. It was possibly based on the village of Alfriston in Sussex, a part of England that the author knew very well. She lives in that house with her mother and father, her grandparents and her aunt and uncle, and they all seem to live very happily indeed. As an adult reader, you look back and wonder how the different generations and the different in-laws all managed to coexist so harmoniously in one very small cottage, but they do. Everybody in this village world has their special place and their special duties. Father, whose name is John, grows all of the vegetables. Mother, whose name is Mary, these are such good English names, does all of the cooking. Grandma does the knitting, auntie does the sewing. There are also animals in Millie Molly Mandy's world. Toby the dog, Topsy the cat, and Twinkle Toes the horse. As a child reader, one of the things I loved most about these stories was the wonderful map at the front of every one of the collections. I loved with my small finger to trace the route that Millie Molly Mandy took when she left the nice white cottage with the thatched roof, walked past the house where little friend Susan lives and picks her up, and then they go on from there to school or the post office or to visit the other friend in the stories, Billy Blunt, or sometimes Jilly as well. Different characters come and go, but the steady main character in the stories is of course Millie Molly Mandy. She begins at about the age of four in the very first stories, and we see her grow up to be about eight years old. And we follow Millie Molly Mandy and her different friends on very simple adventures. She might want to make a gift for somebody's birthday. She goes on a picnic with her friends. The teacher comes to stay. Little friend Susan gets a baby sister, and they decide on the name of Doris. All of these little adventures are wonderfully simple. And the village, of course, is now today like something from a very different era indeed. No cars go racing through those village streets that you see on the map. The house that Millie Molly Mandy lives in has no electricity. It is a very simple era indeed. Now, the stories were written by Joyce Lancaster Brisley. She was born in the year 1896 and spent the first years of her life at Bexhill-on-Sea in Sussex. Her parents divorced in the year 1912, something that was very unusual indeed in that era, and the mother took her daughters to go and live in London. Joyce, from an early age, knew that she needed to earn her living, and so did her sisters, Ethel and Nina. All three of them became illustrators. They found work illustrating picture postcards and then, like Joyce herself, moved on to creating the illustrations for books. So Joyce Lancaster Brisley wrote and illustrated six collections of stories featuring Millie Molly Mandy. She did write other books as well. I was very fond as a child of Marigold in Godmother's House, a book with quite a lot of magic in it, and it always seemed to me that the little girl Marigold had had the most wonderful holiday. The stories appeal, I think, because of their simplicity. There are no fights, there are no great complexities. Everybody seems very happy with the way life is jogging along in an English village. Millie Molly Mandy in almost every scene is wearing her pink and white striped dress. A new dress is a very big event indeed. And there's the wonderful repetition as we learn about that nice white house with the thatched roof and little friend Susan, the repetition of the M sound in Millie Molly Mandy, and all of the little social details of the village life 
and who gets up for what. There is a real charm, I think, in the simplicity of these stories. Lucy Mangan, a very perceptive critic in The Guardian, has said of the Millie Molly Mandy stories, each story is a miniature masterpiece, as clear, warm and precise as the illustrations by the author. Not a great deal happens in these stories, but they have charmed generations of readers. I've never been particularly fascinated by maps, but the one map that I have always absolutely adored is the map of the nameless village in which we find a wonderful literary heroine called Millie Molly Mandy.